I'm in Guatemala City in Central America, and today I'm gonna take you on a street food tour to eat some of the most famous mm. and most delicious Guatemalan street foods in Guatemala City. Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm excited to be in Guatemala City. This is the biggest city in Guatemala and it's actually the biggest city in all of Central America. It's colorful, it's vibrant, and they have some delicious food. So today I'm gonna take you on an ultimate Guatemalan street food tour. We're gonna eat some of the best, some of the most famous street foods. Mm. Mm. It's bigger than my entire arm, including a gigantic, one foot long, just absolutely fully loaded Guatemalan hot dog. Wait, so Pablo, good morning. Good morning. Where are we at first? Uh, we're in the Central Market. It's uh, the only underground market in Guatemala. Oh, okay. We'll be, we'll be walking a little bit underground. I think you'll Oh, yeah, it's you'll underground. Enjoy it. Okay, so, great. Yeah, it's three levels. So, okay. We'll start with the. Welcome to the Mercado Central. This is the central market in Guatemala City. This is where we're going to begin the tour. We're going to walk around. Uh, I think this is a market that has everything you can imagine, from clothes to fruits to vegetables to food stalls to eat at. So we're just going to walk around the market, see what they have, see some of the local ingredients, and we're definitely going to be eating as well. We have a lot of leather also here in Guatemala. Oh, OK. So, yeah. So there's a lot of leather goods. There's textiles, the colorful clothes of Guatemala. The second floor is the uh, food and vegetables. So you'll oh, okay. Oh, we're going down further. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Don't know. I mean, I've seen a couple of, it's almost like an inverted market. It just goes down, down levels. And if you go to the bottom level here, we're getting to the, to the, the food section of the market. Oh, yes. So important to see that we don't get things frozen. Look at the chicken. Okay. Look at everywhere. Everything is not frozen. It's delivered fresh and you have to sell it fresh. People don't buy frozen chicken, for example. So we're starting at the meat section. A lot of fresh pork, a lot of fresh beef, chicken, the meats of Guatemala. And then we're moving into some of the seafood section as well. Hola. The meats, whoa. That's a nice stock of beef right there. I mean, we were just talking with uh, some of the butchers and they said in Guatemala, food, the freshness of meats is extremely important. They sell everything. Everything is slaughtered, butchered the day and they sell everything. Nothing is frozen, everything fresh. All parts of the animal are available. Massive liver, longanisa and chorizo. They have bone marrow. They have the hoofs, everything is available. Nothing goes to waste. Actually, the avocado itself comes from this area of the world. We, from so it's, Chiapas, native. It's, it's native, it's native, it's indigenous. Yeah, from Guatemala, Chiapas, right? that is the southern part of Mexico, okay. all the way down to Costa Rica. Okay. Somewhere over there, the first avocado seed boop, popped off. So we have a different varieties of different types of avocados. Uh, that century, one guy with the Haas name came here, mixed together most of the, some genetics of avocado and came out with the avocado Haas, ah, which eventually okay. was transported into the United States and Mexico and it just blew up. And that's the avocado you get everywhere, right? But here we got the avocado criollo, that is the small one. We have some other avocados that are bigger one and we have the Haas. These ones are all traditional here from Guatemala and in Hello. everywhere you find avocado in our local say, cuisine. Yeah, exactly, okay. in our cuisine. Okay, este es, es has. has. Okay, so, muchas gracias. So, avocados, I mean, we have, the entire world has Guatemala to thank for distributing, for transporting the avocado throughout the world. And I mean, avocados are one of my favorite fruits in the entire world. Thank you to Guatemala, it's only right. Gracias. It's only right that we're starting off with some avocado. Here we go, so this one, we're starting off with, oh, look at that, just peels off. It just peels off. It's perfectly ripe. 
one step backwards. I already okay. did it. Oh, how was it, man? <laughs> no problem. It's, it's perfect. It's very, it's like, mm. it feels like chocolate. It does feel like chocolate. <laughs> it's buttery because buttery. it's so buttery. I can't believe how easy it just comes off the skin. That means it's absolutely perfect to eat. Yeah. Oh, she and likes, the national? This is the national. This is the national. Yeah, it's a little bit more juicy. Okay, you can see even it's a little more oily. It's a little more oily almost. Mm. It's a totally different taste and texture. It's, it is a little more watery, but more sweet, not quite as creamy. Really good. And you really feel and taste the difference. More fruity. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving on to the food court section. People just standing around stalls, just loaded with the fresh dishes of the day. It's vibrant and colorful. Uh, we're gonna probably start eating some things now and then also keep on continue walking around the market. Here in Doña Mela, Doña Mela, it's an, a lady that is famous for this for having this pose for many, 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 many years. She's not with us anymore, but these people continue their spirit. Oh, okay, their okay. So this is, it's such a cool place. They have a couple of dozen different dishes and you can just kind of choose the little plates that you can choose from. A lot of specialties, local dishes. Oh, tacos. Okay. These are the Guatemalan tacos. Okay. This is la patilla de vinagreta de cerdo. This is one of the things that oh, you should really try. This is uh, like the feet of the pork that they put it on vinegar and then they add all of oh, this. Oh, nice. Okay. With, with cabbage vinegar. as well. Okay. Ah, this is la pata y pa que se vea. Oh, yes. It's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, so that's beef panza and that's pork panza. Okay. This is chicharron. Nice. Chicharron on top. Uh -huh. So the tostada and it starts with guacamole. Guacamole. That's guacamole goes on. That's just pure avocado. Con buche. Este es buchachi. So the pork stomach goes on with tomatoes. Y eso es queso. queso. Gracias. Here we go, Pablo, you ready? Yeah, this sure. looks so good. Um, I think we should start with that dish you were talking about then. Yeah, yeah. It's the whole pork, the pig hoof, right? Yeah. The That's been vinegared. Vinegar, it, and been cooked in vinegar and then in vinegar. So okay. basically, you don't, you don't overcook it, you let the vinegar finally oh, the acid. cook it. Yes. The acid just cooks exactly. it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's very traditional from these areas. Of Guatemala, so I think we should try that. We should try that, yeah. Oh, just bite it. Just bite it. Okay. <laughs> Look at this thing. I think we should, let's break and bite, maybe? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's slippery. It's slippery. It tastes really good. Mm. Yeah, it is really good. It's oily. It's blubbery. Oh, live music. It's blubbery. Um, you taste that vinegar. I think it's really all about the texture and you can just keep on like gnawing on that bone and getting the flavor. Mm. Very good. I love the skin. It has this bouncy texture to it. And you taste the vinegar. Yes, definitely. You can also taste with some of those like pickled cabbage. Mm. Oh, the cabbage is amazing. Vinegary, salty, and so juicy. Okay, I'll go for the buche. Wait, wait, wait. You Sprinkle have on some wait. lime? Yeah. Okay. Rather than calling them tacos, though, these are called tortillitos. Tortillas. Tortillas. They're just, it's just like a tortilla wrap. Tortilla. Yeah. And so I'm going for the buche, mm -hmm. the pork stomach. You've got the cow stomach, I think, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Topped with chicharron. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, it's crunchy. It's juicy. The acidity of the limes and the tomatoes. Oh, I do want to add on some of the, the, the salsa picante. Okay. It's good, right? Buche so is amazing. Buche is amazing. I love buche, yeah. Mm. And the way they've cooked it, I think it's been stewed down. 
so it's so or cooked down until it's so tender. And then at the same time, it's mixed with tomatoes and lime juice. So it's almost like a it's almost like a buche ceviche because it has that acidity that's continuing to tenderize it and just bump up the flavor. And then you've got that textural crunch of the chicharro and the fried pork skin. That's so tasty. Mmm. Amazing. I ordered a buche for me because I you gotta have a buche, yeah. <laughs> you need buche. Buche. So look, yeah. This is another one? Yeah, this is called chojin, and it's a very traditional from all over Guatemala. It's very good with beer. Oh, so that's just the radish with chicharron? Yeah. Okay, so very simple. Radish, chicharron, and then you got a buche. Mm -hmm. A pork stomach over there. Yeah. I'm gonna hit mine with some some salsa. Some salsa. Hit mine too. You want some? Yeah. Another tortilla. This time. Um, and Pablo was telling me this is very traditional, very simple. All it is is a radish, kind of like a radish salad um, with tomatoes and then with the chicharron on top. Yeah, it's a very it's Saturday, juicy. It Saturday is juicy. Snack. Very Saturday snack. <laughs> mm. It's so good. Mm. I think what's amazing about that is that you got the the crunch and the freshness of the radish combined with the richness and the crunchiness mm. of the chicharron. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Devoured. Mm. Si le pongo rabano. Oh, with some of the radish topping and Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce, oh, okay. Then we'll put some dry cheese. Some onions and dry Okay, ese es do, doblado. Doblado. Side of it is a is mixture of beef. And vegetables. Beef and vegetables inside. It's yeah. a big corn tortilla, which is folded over deep fried, so it's crispy. And then uh, I love all those toppings that go on top when you order it, along with uh, the radish, tomato sauce, a sprinkle of cheese. Here, actually, I think I can. We can both grab it. Okay. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Loaded with toppings. Oh, the guacamole as well. Mm. Oh, oh, that's amazing. Yes. Beef, I think one of the main vegetables on the inside is potato. It almost has this beef potato mixture with this really crunchy, crispy, slightly oily fried corn tortilla on the outside and then all those toppings coming together. The creaminess of the guacamole, the avocado, the tomato sauce, the sprinkle of cheese for a little bit of salt. Yeah. That's delicious. I go for a little bit more of that. That chili sauce, the salsa picante. Mm. That is so tasty. The crunch of the onions. Oh, the raw onions on there as well. Mm hmm. That's amazing. So we just finished our first antojitos in Guatemala City. That was so good. We're moving into the fruit section of the market and I think what's amazing about Guatemala as well as all of Central America is that you have so many different climate zones from tropical to highlands and so that you can get such a diverse and incredibly diverse range of fruits and vegetables. We're gonna stop at this amazing fruit stall. She must have two dozen varieties of fruits and she's gonna make us a mixed fruit platter or plate to try. The dragon fruit, okay. This is Chico. Chico. Oh, wow. Oh, this is like a, That's like a cherimoya or a anoina. Anona. I've never seen a papausa. pink color like that. Oh, the mangosteen. Okay. Yes, I think these are called, are these the ice cream beans? Ice cream beans. Zapote colombiano. Zapote. Okay. Ah, okay. whoa, it's vibrantly orange. Beautiful. Bien tiene. Okay. Tiene. Okay. Se lo está bien así? Yeah. <laughs> so they've prepared for us. This is like 
not quite a dozen, but at least almost seven, eight, nine different types of fruit that they have. Uh, just a colorful assortment of the local produce and fruits of Guatemala. It's beautiful, I love the colors. Some of them are fruits I've, I've seen them, but these are different varieties of those same fruits. This is the fruit I'm really interested in. One of them, I mean, I'm interested in all of them. This is like a cherimoya or a, a nona fruit or a custard apple, except it's gigantic and I've never seen that pink color. Here we go, let's try it. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Okay, you do taste the same flavor as a custard apple. It is a variety of a custard apple. So creamy, sweet. But it has this almost guava flavor to it. It almost tastes like a cross between a guava and a cherimoya, a custard apple. That's sweet and custardy, delicious. Oh man, I'm trying to balance a lot of fruit. They just totally loaded this. I'll try the, the sapote from Colombian sapote. Mm. Almost has the flavor of a carrot, but sweet and juicy. And you can feel how fibrous it is. Okay, moving right along to the cactus fruit. And so this one they call tuna. Might have had some varieties of this, this fruit before. It's a little bit like fluffy, a little bit dry. And then you have these little seeds, almost like kiwi, but a little drier. Next up, I'll try it in. A Bolivia. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that one's incredible. Almost has the flavor of mango steam. So juicy and creamy. Almost has like a milkiness. Like fruit nectar syrup that just comes out of it. Okay, and here we go, this one. I think it's the same as the ice cream bean, but it comes in a long pot. It has these little white seeds covered in a, kind of like a, almost like a fluffy little wrapper. Paterna, Paterna. Paterna, okay. Yes, it does kind of taste like vanilla ice cream, except it's kind of like silky. Feels like the, the texture of felt, felt in your mouth. Mm. But then it kind of gets juicy and sort of has this creaminess to it as well. Moving on to the dragon fruit, pitaya. Mm. Wow, that's sweet. Most of the time dragon fruit is not sweet. It's kind of like, actually kind of neutral tasting. This one is sweeter than a kiwi. Oh man, that's the sweetest dragon fruit I think I've ever had. And it's just dripping with juice. I definitely have a dragon fruit mustache. <laughs> mm. uh, we're, we're entering a part where you can find a lot of uh, objects that are used for worshiping uh, God. Okay. But here, um, candles even and though incense. It's a Catholic religion, candles and incense do have a Maya meaning. Okay. So they, they hide most of their Maya traditions inside of Catholicism. So you will see that many of these candles have colors because colors not mean the exact the same thing as in Catholicism. Here colors mean uh, different things. For example, the red means the morning, the early morning. The dark color means the dark of the night. And yellow means corn. So ah, okay. it depends on what you're doing and where you're putting it, what you're gonna ask for. You will also find a lot of different saints that are not saints. These are Maya saints that became with them. That got a Catholic uh, meaning okay. eventually. Okay. okay. And then one of the things about Guatemala is that it remains very indigenous. I believe about 60% of the population is indigenous. So the, the market continues and keeps on going. And we are now passing through the food court section. Uh, Pablo says we're here a little bit early, but if you come here at the peak of lunchtime, it will just be packed. It's just stall after stall with seating. Um, and they all, it's like home cooked Guatemalan food right within this food cart tables. We're gonna have an adobado tortillas. Okay. Adobado con chuleta, con chuleta. Con adobado. 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 Con so onions, tomatoes, and coriander goes on, or cilantro. Mm. 
Oh, and a sprinkle of salt goes on as well. Oh, con arroz. Con arroz. Okay. The vegetables that go with the beef soup. Oh, cebollas. Cebolla y cilantro. Y cilantro. So the green onions and coriander goes into that beef soup. Wow. This stall here in the market, in the food court, is impressive. They have at least a dozen dishes going, and that's what's cooking on the stove, like the stews, the hearty dishes, the soups. But then they're also famous for their cabinet of fried meats. And so we especially came to try the adobada, but we could not leave without trying some of their other specialties, like the beef soup. Pablo, let's, let's try the adobada first. Sure. Gracias. So you can see another tortillas with adobada or famous Oh, and these tacos. tortillas are, these tortillas are really thick. They're, they're the masa. handmade. Oh, handmade, the masa, okay. Yeah, in Guatemala, we don't, we don't use the machine to make tortillas, we okay. use the hands. Hands, okay, uh -huh. here we go. Mmm. 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 That is awesome. Tender, smoky pork with the achiote. Gracias. Oh, I think we got a hand delivery of some more tortillas. It's salty. So then they have this big jar of fresh, freshly made pickled uh, jalapenos and cabbage. Nice. Mm. Oh, so it's not, it's not really sour. It's more like almost a brine, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like a salty water. Mm -hmm. Um, really refreshing. You've got the full crispiness of the cabbage and the jalapenos. Almost like a, like a refreshing garnish. And then to wash that down, a fresh um, starfruit juice. Mm. Sweet, refreshing. And so then we asked them what is one of their most popular soups. They said the soup de caldo de res. So that's yeah. a beef soup, beef soup. You can see how thick, how oily that soup is from being boiled. I'm sure all of the marrow, all of the fat has come out of it. Oh, do you want to have some, I'm have good. another spoon? You, you, you good? Just, okay. You should go. Okay. You should try it. Okay. It's, it's a one, one man's food, you know. It looks a lot, but yeah. It's all, I mean, there's a little bit of beef in there, but it's all about that broth. Oh, that's incredible. That's like pure beef flavor. It's thick. It's so rich. Sprinkle some on the right. Wow. Chayote. I'm going to sprinkle some of that lime juice in here. The proper way is to grab a tortilla. You grab a tortilla and a hand. You handmade. will grab a little bit of, of whatever handmade vegetable different. you want. Oh, okay. A little bit of rice okay. and a little bit of the juice. And, you will... and then you eat it with yeah. the tortilla. Okay. Yeah. I love these tortillas. So what you can do is grab some of the some of the vegetables, the cabbage. Is this the right way? Yeah. Some of the carrots. Happy birthday to you. Got to add some rice in there. Okay, so you can, the traditional way is to take a bite. Uh-huh. Take a bite. Drink the broth. Mmm. Mmm. Whoa, it's hot. Mix it in. I think because it's so oily, it just remains so hot as it sits here. Mix it all in your mouth. So you've got all the vegetables, you've got the tortilla, and then you have that rich, meaty broth. What a combination. Yeah, I mean, when you take a, when you take a big gulp of that broth, that's when you just get the magnitude, the full flavor of it. There's, I mean, eating it from a spoon is okay. I mean, it's still good. But when you take that gulp, that's ultimate satisfaction. Mm. It's just really like home cooked. Okay, it's just home cooking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you come here to look for that taste, right? To this food court. Delicious. Uh -huh. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. 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 So that was called Comedor Angelica. It's so nice, so friendly, delicious home cooked food. Okay, we are. Oh, well on our way on this 
Guatemalan street food tour. It's been great so far. I'm loving it. The friendliness, the colors, the vibrancy. We are taking a walk outside. Oh, it's like emerging from a movie theater, from the depths of the market into the bright, the bright light. So this is the Central Park, a big gathering area of Guatemala City. Behind me is the Catedral de Guatemala. This is the biggest, this is the most important Catholic cathedral in all of Guatemala. And as Pablo was explaining to me, something very interesting is that that front, that facade, that's the original dating back to the 15 or 1600s. But they made that like the strongest, the most powerful facade. As you go back, you can see it turns white and it has different structures. Uh, that's because of the earthquakes. Guatemala is very prone to earthquakes. And so the back of the cathedral has been destroyed by earthquakes. The front remains strong because they built that so strong. This is such a cool atmosphere and environment. I mean, I love this about South America and about Central America is these communal plazas where you can really observe life. People watch, uh, come to hang out. There are thousands of pigeons. Uh, I love the giant Guatemalan flag just blowing in the wind, but really a beautiful atmosphere, beautiful location. Ah. This is when you can really like sense you're in the heart of Guatemala City, which we are. First taste of Guatemalan churros. So he's, he's famous for his churros here. Um, Guatemalan style fried like donuts. Uh, he keeps them hot and then as you order them, he dunks them into sugar. Oh. Little bite size. Mmm. They're kind of, they're really crispy. Yeah, really crispy. A little bit gooey in the center. Sweet. Mmm. Really, yeah. They're deep fried, but they don't feel that that oily, actually. There we go. But we also got the stuffed, the stuffed chudos. A little bite sized again. Oh, it's really sugary. Crispy, mmm. And the cream is not too rich. There's kind of like a, an extra like texture in your mouth along with that crispy churro. What a just great live music, uh, people walking by, fantastic. Started off today in zone one, Guatemala City. Something you've got to know about Guatemala City is that it's divided into zones. And zone one, that's like ground zero. That's where the city all begins. That's where the central market was. That's where the central cathedral was, all the government buildings. And it goes around kind of in a spiral shape. So we've now, so you can sometimes have like zone one. And then if you cross over a street, you'll be in another, like not just necessarily zone two, uh, but like you could be in zone four because it goes in a spiral shape. So now we've continued continued on to zone five, and we are going to eat something very special that's gonna be really good. And we're at Los Chavos Ceviche. It's called Los, Los, Los Chavos. Los Chavos, okay, yeah, Los like, Chavos. Chavos means like uh, John Boys. Okay, yeah. So it's like the so John the famous, Boys Ceviche. Famous for Guatemalan Ceviche? Yeah, famous for Guatemalan Ceviche. Traditionally, people come here Mondays and Sundays when they're too hungover. So ah. it's a way to, to be, feel better. I mean, they have a bunch of different ceviches, but we're gonna get the giant mixture, the super mixture of ceviche. And they have four different sizes, small, medium, grand and familiar. I think it's the family size is beyond the grand size. We gotta get the family size. 
Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, the we're being served something. Soup. It's a fish soup. Okay. Courtesy. Oh, okay. Something that's kind of cool is that literally, the moment, the second you sit down, they deliver a, kind of like a seafood broth, which is kind of like just an appetizer. I think it kind of gets your, your what's your appetite, what's your taste buds, to then maybe it helps you order more. I'm going to add some of this. It's called, what did you say it's called? Chintepe. 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 And this is the seasoning for the, it's, it's cilantro and onions. Onions. Lime. Okay. Try that. Try that broth. Mm. Oh, it's almost like a chowder. Thick, hearty, seafoody. Forgot to add the lime. Squeeze of lime on this would be great. Oh, that's really good. And I love it with that seasoning. I think that chili water with that vinegar, with that coriander, all that, that just increases the flavor. Okay, so we're getting the Super Bowl. Tomates, so tomatoes go in first. Oh, a lot of tomatoes. Okay. And this looks like a mix of onions and cilantro. Now calamari. Have, oh, calamari. That's like a squid. Yeah. A uh, bundle fish. fish. Oh, this is fish. Cooked only in lime. Mm. Octopus. Okay, crab. Like the imitation oh, crab. Octopus, octopus goes octopus. in. Oh, yeah, that's a small mountain. And this is that's abalone. Is abalone? Snails. Okay. Oh, and here's the shrimp. Shrimps? Goes in. Shampoo. Oh, there's the sauce. Whoa. Oh, there's the sauce, and those are like, looks like clams or... Super especial. Super especial, okay. Salt, Salt goes on. Oh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire shots. Wow, that is unexpected. Lime juice, fresh limes. And you squeeze. Oh, that squeeze on top. Okay. Oh, he made like a volcano. Mm -hmm. And that lime gets squeezed into the center. Oh, a lot of limes go in. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are so juicy. Only. Okay, and then mix. It's a massive, overflowing bowl of ceviche. Yes, and he just like, it's overflowing from the top, so he just yeah, has like to mix it. Is... Yes, mix it from the top and kind of stir it's it in, holding it in. Part. Excellent. And this is Guatemala City style. I see, I see this. Okay with six different proteins and seafoods, Worcestershire sauce, and a, a small like bag full of limes, only in Guatemala City. Guatemala Muchas sauce. gracias. That was awesome. To go with the ceviche, we're gonna stop off at the bar now to order something called a michelada. Esteban is the bartender, and he's gonna make micheladas, the Guatemalan style of michelada. Okay. Okay. Oh, it dips into the, the chili and salt first. Okay. Salsa inglesa, limón, poco de sal. So this is a mix with salt, with lime juice. Worcestershire sauce. The Worcestershire sauce, okay. Tomato, tomato juice. Tomamos como adorno un limoncito, ¿verdad? Ya escogen si desean dorada, gallo. Yeah. Okay, so now you, from here you can choose your beer Yeah. and you pour that in there. Yeah, I chose you a black beer so we can go with the... Okay, that will go with the... Black ceviche. The black ceviche. ceviche. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Cheers to Guatemala. Oh. oh, that's so refreshing. Oh, the acidity of the tomato juice, the carbonation of the beer and the bitterness, and then you've got that saltiness, a little bit of chili in there. That is extraordinary. All right, and so we have the ceviche here. Again, it's a small mountain overflowing over the bowl. Lots of tomatoes and onions and cilantro all of the seafood, there's imitation crab in here. But the most unique and surprising ingredient is that Worcestershire sauce. We need to prepare it too. Oh, you add your own seasonings? Yeah. Okay. 
That's like the main ingredient of this, this type of um, ceviche. And then we also have ketchup. Yeah, ketchup is the main ingredient for the people in Guatemala. Without is, ketchup, a lot of people don't like the ceviche, which is a weird thing, right? That is yeah. definitely interesting. <laughs> that is definitely yeah. interesting. So okay? So you gotta add ketchup. Yeah, the ratio, the ratio, it's like this. Oh, it's gonna it in a lot of ketchup. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try mine first without the ketchup, and then I'll add ketchup. Okay, grab a little bit of the tamale. Grab a little bit of that. And these are these are plain tamales? Yeah. So there's no meat or anything no. in it. It's just like pure corn. Pure corn mess. Okay, mix it with the, the ceviche. Yeah, Cheers, exactly. man. Guatemalan ceviche. Mmm. So refreshing. Cold. You got that. So the Worcestershire sauce provides this kind of well rounded, sweet, sour, acidity. That forms the basis of this Guatemalan ceviche. Um, yeah, and then you've got all the all the pre-cooked seafoods, the shrimp, the fish, the octopus in there. Everything is cooked in lime, mm -hmm. so it's pre-cooked but it's cooked in lime. Okay, so it's yeah, fresh, fresh, fresh. Okay, just as the meat in the market, just as the you know whatever we have eaten, it comes today and it finishes today. I really like it with that tamale. That's good. That you can taste the freshness, the the quality of that corn. Okay, some shrimp, that juice, all of that lime juice. Mm. Mm. Really refreshing. Okay, it's time. Yeah. Ketchup, a squeeze. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. Guatemalan style? I'll add this chili as well. This chili is amazing. And then you gotta mix it all up with that, with that ketchup. So most people would not even eat this without the ketchup. Yeah. You gotta have ketchup. It's a must. It's a must. That is what a twist. What a twist. What a what a surprise. Never would have guessed ketchup is essential in Guatemalan ceviche. But that's that's for all ceviches or for this type of ceviche? This type of ceviche is specific, okay. but they use it for most ceviches too, unless well mm. if you do it with a Peruvian ceviche, it tastes really bad. <laughs> but like with this one, the sweetness of the ketchup comes uh -huh. up, so now it's a whole different ceviche. Yeah, true. You've got that real sharp acidity with that sweetness of the, the tomato sauce, tomato saucy ketchup. Yeah, it is good. It's kind of like that addictive flavor that you get when you have like a sweet and sour dish, because it's sweet then sour, makes you want to keep on eating. Mm. And drinking. Oh, that is amazing. And we got it specifically with a, a dark, a dark black beer, which gives it more of this toasty, toasty flavor to it to go along with the, the dark ceviche. Mm. Oh yeah. And I would say that in comparison, I mean this entire region of the world eats ceviche, but in comparison to other versions of ceviche, this especially this Guatemalan version, it's really such a diversity of seafood, so much seafood in one bowl, I think six different types of seafood. And the other thing is that there's so much going on. There's a lot of vegetables in there too. A lot of tomatoes, a lot of onions and cilantro. Whereas other versions of ceviche in surrounding countries can have like sometimes just single seafood, sometimes no tomatoes. Um, I think that's what stands out. That's the difference of this Guatemalan style ceviche. And the Worcestershire, not, not mentioning, not forgetting the Worcestershire sauce and the ketchup. So next up on this Guatemalan street food tour, we are going to eat what is possibly the king of all street foods. It's called chucos. It's a hot dog, but it's this giant hot dog sandwich. We're here at one of the places that started it all, El Chino. <laughs> so Pablo, yeah. what is a chuco? It's, uh, it's a Guatemalan hot dog. Yeah. It's basically, they call it chucos because it's a dirty one. Because the it dirty, is, it's called, yeah, so Shukos translates to dirty one. That dirty one. Nice. Yeah. So it was called a dirty one because it was street food, street food, street food. The main difference between this and a hot dog from other places is that we grill everything, including the bread. 
Ah, so the okay. bread is toasty. And we add a lot of guacamole. So the guacamole and the, the type of uh, protein that we add to the shuko gives it this flavor that it's like moisty, but at the same time, it has a lot of, uh, you know, like protein flavor of, of sausage and chorizo and localiza. So, okay. yeah, it's... Oh, so all the meats, all the sausages and hot dogs, they all get sliced so you get more grill flavor. Oh, there's bacon, there's steak, there's longanisa, there's salami. Okay. Okay, the guacamole. So that's just straight avocado, I think. Is this though, it's adobada? Adobada. Okay, even some pork adobada goes on. Oh man, the mayonnaise, the mustard. Oh, and then loaded with, ¿qué es eso? Cabbage. Oh, okay. Cabbage, onions, onions. cilantro. Yeah. And now this is like a tomato? Tomato. Tomato sauce. Oh, oh, and more, more guacamole goes on. Oh, and the lid goes on, look at that char. Oh, that's, that's what makes it so fragrant. Okay. Oh. The Super Shuko. It's gigantic. It literally, this is my arm. <laughs> it's bigger than my entire arm. It's over a foot long. It's like a foot and a half, maybe two feet, cut into two pieces. Sometimes they even cut it into four pieces, so it's like an entire sandwich for the entire family. Yeah. Pablo, how yes. often do you eat chucos? Uh, I eat it often. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> this size, though. Daily? But yeah. <laughs> not daily. Not daily. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, like, this size, it's a family size. Actually, when you order, you order three chucos or two or one of these, right? And you can yeah. share it with yeah, everybody. Exactly. It has so much meat. I think it has more meat than our arm, too. It's no longer. But... Let's go. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's bohemoth. It's gigantic. <laughs> we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's do Mmm. See? Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, that's so good. I love the combination of all those meats, plus the bread is really soft and really crispy. Mm. Look. It's extremely, the bread is, the bread is extremely fluffy and then toasted until it's like completely crispy. Forgot about the mayonnaise and the mustard in there that kind of just blends into a sauce. That's good. That is incredible. You do feel all the meats too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it's so many things going on, you can distinguish which meat you, you got a bite of. Yeah. Even though it may be multiple meats in one bite. <laughs> you have some salsa available as well. I will drizzle on. Oh, oh, yeah, that's spicy. That one, okay. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm hmm. With that salsa. Oh, that bumps it up. The, the spice, the smokiness. Good, right? Awesome. My first ever suko. It's way more than just a hot dog, it's like the, the Guatemalan all you can eat all-inclusive sandwich. <laughs> Just for the... Mm. And even though it's gigantic, I think because the bread is so soft and fluffy, it actually goes down quite easily, like dangerously easily. <laughs> Before you know it, you can eat through a foot long, a foot and a half of shuko and be happy about it. Without a doubt, what stands out to me about the shuko is that everything is smoky, everything is grilled. That gives everything this extra layer of complexity and flavor. And somehow, ironically, even though it's so many things, so many toppings, so many meats, they all blend together in a perfect harmony. It's a genius of a hot dog sandwich.
And this is what this is what happens when you eat a shuko. It just like toppings start to sprawl. So I'm just gonna kind of scoop it back on. Oh yes. There's I think there's no like totally clean way to eat a shuko when it's fully loaded like this. Toppings are just dripping and oozing, water falling out. Mm. Oh, and the cabbage. It's almost like sauerkraut. Oh, yeah. This is Guatemala in a bun. <laughs> yes. That was absolutely awesome. My first in life. That was my first shuko, and that was so tasty, so good, so gigantic. But we're continuing on. We have more to eat, including another shuko. So we're, we're continuing with the shukos and um, what is this one? What is this one called? These are the traditional shukos of Campo Marte. Campo Marte, yeah. okay. So Campo Marte, um, this is also extremely well known in Guatemala City for their shukos. There's about four or five stalls right here and this is kind of a sports park area and this is like the real street food shukos, the traditional way you can get tortillas. They have all the meats. They're known for the transmetro. I think that means the metro. Does that mean the metro like like train? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a transmetro that it's that comes here. And, so yeah. it's a it's a sandwich. It's a hot dog sandwich as long as a train, a metro. It's a metro, <laughs> and we're gonna order it now. So we have chorizo, longaniza, ¿qué es eso? Salami, salami, y bacon. Cocino. Cocino, bacon. Okay. And one of the interesting things here you can get is you could get it on the bread, El the transmet, the baguette, the baguette, or you can get it on tortillas. Oh, guacamole. Okay, oh, the guacamole goes on, the avocado. I love how they put the guacamole, the avocado, onto the bread as it's toasting. The hot dogs go on. Oh, the craft singles go on, the cheese. The, the mayonnaise swipe. Oh, and mustard. Oh, the cabbage, yes. Oh, and then the onions. Some more guacamole. Oh, I forgot to have him. Okay, here we go. This one looks absolutely incredible. Again, everything is cooked over the fire. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> that bread is so toasted and so crispy that I almost cut my lip as I took my first bite. Oh, I love that. I love that cabbage. It's like salted and preserved, kind of like sauerkraut actually. Plus the hot dogs, the tocino, which is the bacon. You've got the salami in there. You've got the, the chorizo and the longaniza, sausages. The freshness of the onions and the cilantro. Oh, that's good. Oh man, the mustard, the mayo combo. Okay, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna add in some of that, that salsa picante, some of the chili sauce. Oh, yes. Oh, I want to drench it in this. Oh, that looks spicy. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, with that salsa picante, that spicy sauce. Oh, that's so good. That, I think that's just straight up like liquid chili. There's no, no salt, no vinegar in there. Just the heat. Not too hot, a little bit spicy. Kind of burns your lips a little bit. But then that, that just adds delicious heat. We need to add a little more. Mm. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just like everything coming together in that soft, crusty, really fluffy loaf that's toasted, that's charred, that's smoky to perfection. And as ironic as it kind of seems because it's such a gigantic mixture of things, they all come together in perfect harmony. Oh, well, that salsa makes it so good. Oh, drench it. So people come here. Lots of people come and just sit in their cars and eat or sit in the back of their car. Others just stand here at the grill as it's being made. Chucos, Guatemalan chucos. Mm. Oh, all oh, the bacon. With each bite, you get a new protein. And by the way, not only do they do bread, they do the super tortilla. 
So everything, all the same things inside of a giant corn tortilla. That was so much fun. I loved the market, the vibrancy, all the different ingredients, and the shukos. Oh, when you come to Guatemala, you do not want to miss eating shukos. They're so good. And I'll have all the places that we went to in the description box below that you can check out when you're in Guatemala City. And also, I mean, this is day one in Guatemala, but we're traveling all the way around the country. We're gonna be exploring some rare and all the local Guatemalan food. You're, gonna, you're not gonna wanna miss any videos in this series, so make sure you keep on following along. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Ethnica Travel. This is not sponsored, but they did an amazing job to arrange my entire trip here to Guatemala and arrange all the food experiences. And to Pablo, who's been our local guide, he loves to eat, uh, he's so knowledgeable. It's been a lot of fun. And I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Guatemala City, and I'll see you on the next video.